I've always held a special place in my heart for my grandparents, a sentiment that dates back to my early years. Perhaps it was because my parents were frequently away due to work commitments that I found solace in the warm embrace of grandma and grandpa. My name is Hilda, and at 31 years old, I stand on the brink of motherhood, eagerly anticipating the arrival of my first child. In these final months of my pregnancy, excitement bubbles within me, yet it's tempered by a nagging concern. My husband, Owen, who just turned 32. My worry stems from the subtle transformation I've observed in him. Lately, he's grown increasingly irritable, a phenomenon that coincides with what experts term digital caregiving. It was during an incident at my grandparents' house, where Owen was setting up their Wi-Fi, that his frustration reached a crescendo. Despite my grandparents' lack of need for Wi-Fi, we visited them occasionally. However, Owen's annoyance was palpable when he couldn't access his favorite paid movie site. He grumbled incessantly, even though my grandparents had personally funded the installation to accommodate his interests. His discontent seemed boundless, and he criticized every aspect of the installation process. My grandmother tried to correct his mispronunciations, pointing out that it was Google, not goggles, and Chrome, not columns. But her corrections only elicited a loud click of his tongue in response. I empathized with his frustration but it left me with a sense of unease that defied explanation. Eventually, the installation was completed, but the atmosphere grew tense, far worse than the challenges of physical caregiving. It felt like a different, more insidious form of caregiving, one imposed by the digital world. I attempted to reason with Omen, suggesting that there were computer classes available for the elderly that he could learn from someone else. I even proposed hiring professional help if needed but he dismissed my concerns with a sarcastic remark, expressing his fatigue and promptly left for his surfing hobby. This behavior was a departure from the man I married, a man who was once patient and kind. In the wake of his temperamental outbursts, Owen's attitude seeped into our home, leaving me feeling abandoned and helpless. I found myself seeking refuge at my grandparents' house, where I unwittingly vented my frustrations. My grandparents, wise in their years, offered a perspective that struck a chord with me. Perhaps, Grandma gently suggested, your husband feels like the impending arrival of the baby is pulling you away from him. The reason my love for my grandparents runs deep is their invaluable life experience, which they generously share as guidance. One evening during a visit, as I prepared to bid them farewell, my grandmother, in her thoughtful way, acknowledged the challenges of managing household chores while pregnant. She handed me a dish of homemade mac and cheese, a small but heartfelt gesture. However, when I served the same mac and cheese for dinner at home, my husband's complaints were swift and unrelenting. Ignoring his grumbles, I gently caressed my growing belly, now more susceptible to frequent kicks and agonizing back pain. My grandmother had prepared the meal with my condition in mind, but the issue went deeper. My husband's concern grew evident as he questioned my frequent visits to grandma and grandpa's, connecting it with my choice to bring back mac and cheese. I believe that serving the dish should be evidence enough of my love for him. But much like prenatal depression in expectant mothers, my grandmother suggested that something might be troubling him as well. He expressed his dissatisfaction with our dated dishes, comparing them to the cuisine of the 80s, before announcing his plan to go surfing. He dismissed the idea of eating the mac and cheese, seemingly convinced that the allure of modern pasta would outweigh his nostalgia. With a resigned sigh, I sat alone, wondering if the arrival of our baby might change his perspective, as my grandmother often emphasized the transformative power of a newborn. My hope was faint but persistent. I believed that our child's presence could lift the blues that had settled over us. The labor was grueling, seven hours of intense pain followed by three more in the delivery room. It was a challenging initiation into motherhood, yet the sight of our baby's face made every hardship inconsequential. Despite being tiny, the baby resembled a miniature human down to their tiny fingers. I thought that perhaps my eternal blues and my husband's gloom could both dissipate in the face of this new life. Unfortunately, my husband never visited the hospital during my stay nor did he make an effort to meet our newborn. Instead, when I returned home from the hospital, 
I was met with his continued absence. He questioned, his doubt evident in his eyes, is this really my child? You've often left home, claiming to visit your grandparents. I find it hard to believe. As I stood on the doorstep, holding our newborn, he coldly demanded, give me some of your hair. I need a DNA test to confirm if it's really your child. My heart raced with disbelief. Where did this come from? I thought. I had just endured the excruciating pain of childbirth. Was it fair for him to accuse me like this? Anger surged through me, an intensity I had never felt before. Was he really accusing me of infidelity? What infuriated me more was Owen's complete lack of joy in the presence of such an adorable baby. It felt like my very essence of motherhood was being negated. The next day, pushed beyond my limits, I poured out my grievances to my grandparents, who had come to check on the baby. My grandfather, perhaps trying to offer support from a male perspective, said, If you haven't done anything wrong, why not take the DNA test? Women can hold their heads high if they are innocent but sometimes men need evidence to believe. Sharing objective facts is important. If this clears the suspicion, ask him to make it up to you with a nice cake or something. His words did offer a measure of solace, so I decided to submit my hair for the DNA test. I hadn't done anything wrong, and if this resolved things amicably, so be it. I convinced myself of my innocence. However, a week later, Owen slammed a paper with the test results in front of me, his face triumphant. The test result is here. It's not my child. What's the meaning of this? He declared, pointing at the paper that confirmed the absence of any genetic match with him. I stared at the paper in utter shock. This is evidence of adultery, he stated, his voice laced with accusation. I was dumbfounded, with no memory of such an event. Clutching the damning evidence, I went to my grandparents' house, where tears flowed freely in their comforting embrace. After a brief silence, my grandfather spoke gently, Hilda, you used to come to our house when you were in trouble, didn't you? It's okay. Leave the rest to me. He patted my shoulder with his wrinkled yet reassuring hand and then tenderly stroked my hair. The baby's soft fontanelle, yet to close, felt delicate beneath my touch. From my childhood, my grandfather had always reassured me, saying, it's okay. And he continued to do so today. Large, heavy tears spilled down my cheeks as I whispered, Thank you, Grandpa. A few days later, my grandfather made a significant move. He called Owen, summoning us all to their home for a weekend discussion, a discussion inevitably leading toward divorce. Owen arrived, his arrogance evident as he looked down at me, deliberately placing the DNA test results he had shown me earlier onto a table. While my parents were aware of the impending discussion, only the four of us, my grandparents, Owen, and I, were present, per my grandfather's decision. For now, leave it to me, he had said. As we gathered in the living room of my grandparents' house, my grandfather began the conversation. He distributed copies of the DNA test results, irrefutable proof that there was no blood relation between Owen and the baby. Everyone examined the paper, and my grandfather proudly stated, this is from Adam's clinic, as written here. There's no denying it. Owen, clearly baffled, asked about the appraisal. What appraisal? He questioned, his confusion evident. With an ominous chuckle, my grandfather placed some similar-looking hair on top of a copy of the appraisal, result that Owen had prepared. This is a genuine document from Adam's hospital where the DNA test results are recorded, my grandfather explained. I had a test done to check the relationship between grandma and her daughter, in other words, between Hilda's mother and her. I blinked in confusion, struggling to comprehend the situation. Why? I stammered, trying to make sense of it all. Take a good look, Hilda, my grandfather grinned. Compare this DNA report with the one he brought. The format, the style of the document, completely different. Beads of sweat formed on Alan's forehead as my grandfather continued. He recounted how, feeling slighted by Owen's suggestion that I attend computer classes for the elderly, he had indeed attended one. There, he had met a doctor from Adams Hospital. The doctor's familiarity with an appraiser led to an unexpected turn of events. When I saw the appraisal result that Hilda brought, I wondered why it was done at Adams Hospital instead of the Harris Maternity Clinic, 
where Hilda gave birth, my grandfather explained. I assumed that if it was the maternity clinic, they would have conducted the test using Hilda's saliva. Truth is stranger than fiction, huh? Up to this point, the grandfather's eyes had been filled with disbelief. When I asked the doctor at Adams Hospital, he continued, he confirmed that your granddaughter hadn't taken any tests here. After further discussions, he suggested that showing you our official document would expose the lie clearly. Owen began to tremble. This is forgery of private documents, the furious doctor at Adams Hospital had declared. You should prepare for serious repercussions. I'm sorry, Owen finally admitted, tears streaming down his face. It was reckless. I never thought I'd get caught. What do you mean, never thought? That makes it even more unforgivable, the grandfather reprimanded sharply. I have no intention of forgiving you. I want to make this a tale to take to the grave. Let me tell you how I uncovered the lie. The roles of detective and suspect reversed. Listening to Hilda's claim, the grandfather decided to investigate using the computer skills he had recently acquired. With practiced movements, he logged into the computer and performed a search. I did an image search for DNA test certificates, he said, emphasizing the words Google Chrome as his grandparents engaged in a lighthearted comedy routine. The very first image that came up was identical to the document my husband initially showed me. Owen, now sobbing, was handed a bundle of papers by the grandfather. Naturally, we're curious about the motive behind this forgery, the grandfather said, his tone stern. I hacked into your computer. Upon hearing about Owen's surprisingly technical skills, he reflexively raised his head in astonishment. Hacking. It wasn't just him who shouted, I did too. To be precise, I snooped into your computer, the one in your room. How did you know the password? It must be 4646 or 4633. Owen stammered in surprise. I heard it from a retired cop I met in a computer class. I said, explaining further. The surfers around this area mostly use 4646 or 4633 in their pins. Ah, Owen exclaimed in realization. It means going off. Exactly, I confirmed. The senior network at the computer class is something to be feared. So I tried in putting it on a whim, and lo and behold, I got access just like that. Grandpa continued, his excitement palpable. But cracking the password is impressive. But there's more. You know, when you look at the timeline on Google Maps, it shows all of your activity history. Sweat dripped from his chin onto the table. The ink on the fake DNA test report is smudging, so I investigated. And just so you know, this wasn't taught in class. I found this method by searching tirelessly to protect my precious grandchild. I searched for all the days when Hilda came to vent and the days you went surfing. I was shocked. All the destinations were shady motels. Here's the printed proof, Grandpa declared, slamming a stack of papers onto the table. But this alone won't. No, this is more than enough, don't you think? Ready to confess. Owen hesitated, but before he could respond, Grandpa ignored him and brought over a tablet. I borrowed all the data saved on your computer. Allowing messages to be viewed on the computer backfired on you. Flirting with this woman called Mally, I've transferred all that data onto this tablet. Grandpa opened the tablet screen, revealing a flood of evidence of Owen's infidelity, including messages like, Hotel Lagoon was nice, and I really want us to be a real couple soon. Winky face. Owen couldn't say a word anymore. It was you who told me to go to the computer class, wasn't it? Grandpa delivered the final blow, his voice firm with disappointment. How dare you neglect your heavily pregnant wife at such a delicate time? Realize the lowly act you have done as a man. You don't deserve to be the father of my adorable great-grandchild. You framed Hilda for cheating, hurt her, and used your own child as an excuse to frolic with your mistress. It's absolutely disgraceful. You deserve to be punished. Owen could only bow down in submission as Grandpa added insult to injury. I've copied the forged data from the DNA test report you made as evidence of your criminal activity, he said, rendering him completely incapacitated. Naturally, I ended up deciding to divorce him right after giving birth, but I received a hefty amount of compensation for his adultery, and of course, from his mistress as well. 
I made him pay child support in a lump sum. So financially, I've gotten a bit comfortable. I'm thinking of looking for a daycare for my child to attend soon. As the saying goes, when the money is gone, so is the relationship. And it was exactly the case with him and his mistress. I got inundated with crying emails from Owen saying, I'm broke and the woman has left me. Please take me back. But I promptly blocked him. More importantly, he's being sued by Adams Clinic for forging private documents. There's no way I could reconcile with such a person. Meanwhile, my child has been lovingly welcomed by my grandparents. Recently, they've started to chuckle at the sound of the bell when hitting a stuffed roly-poly toy with their fist. Children grow up fast. Looks just like grandma, doesn't she? She's going to be a beauty, grandpa says. No way, she's going to be much more beautiful than me. Grandma laughs too. Let's take pictures and make a photo movie. A baby's face changes every day. Grandpa, in a good mood, heads to his beloved computer. Thank you, Grandpa, Grandma. I really love you both. Thank you for watching the video all the way to the end. If you resonated with the content, please leave a positive rating and a comment.